what's up guys it's josh back with another video and today i want to show you guys how to set up ssh key authentication on ubuntu 20.04 Okay guys, so I wanted to do this video because I noticed a lot more people interested in using Linux as an operating system and also setting up a lab so they can actually learn how to use Linux. So I wanted to go through how to actually protect yourself while running a Linux server. And one of those things is setting up your server to use SSH key authentication. And this is a very simple process. And what I want to do is show you guys how to generate your public and private keys on your local system and then upload them to a Ubuntu server so you guys can use SSH key authentication to connect to the server. And then I'll also go through and show you guys how to change the configurations on your SSH server to only allow key authentication. So let's go down and switch over to my desktop so I can walk you guys through the simple process of doing this. Okay, so I'm logged into my Linux desktop and today I'll be using Zorn OS, it, which is a very simple desktop environment to actually use. It's Ubuntu based, so a lot of the commands are pretty much the same as Ubuntu, but I'll be setting up SSH key authentication connecting to a Ubuntu server that I have running in the background as well. So let's open up the terminal and walk through the full process. And what you wanna do is make sure you have SSH install, which most distributions of Linux come with SSH installed. And we can run man and then SSH, and that'll show us the manual for SSH. And that lets you know that it's actually installed on the server or on the system itself. And then also you wanna verify that you can connect to your SSH server. And I know the IP address of this server, so I'm gonna just type it in, but it's SSH and then 192.168.10.146. So whatever your IP address is, it could be a server in the cloud, it could be a server anywhere. Uh, just verify that you can actually connect to it. And as you can see, I'm connected to my Ubuntu 20.04 server dot um, three LTS. And I'm able to, you know, successfully log into it using my password authentication. And what we want to do is avoid using password authentication because this opens up your server to brute force. And let's say you use the same password in another location where those passwords have been stolen for whatever reason. Well, a lot of times those passwords are added to dictionaries. And if they run a brute force against your server, then your password may be in that list. That's why it's very important that you change your passwords every three to six months, so to speak. Now let's go down and log out of that server right fast and create our public and private key using a utility that's built in with the SSH client. It's called SSH key gen. So all you have to do is type SSH and then dash key gen. And this is basically the key generator. And it will store your key pair under uh, .SSH, which is located in your home directory. So all you have to do is press enter here and that will generate that file. And the next thing you want to do is put in a passphrase. Now, I don't recommend doing this. Uh, well, I don't do it. It is recommended that you do use a passphrase. That way, if someone steals your laptop or gets this key off your system, it will have some extra security on it because it has a passphrase on it. So as long as that passphrase is different from any other passwords that you use, then no one will be able to access your key and log into your server using that key. But I'm not going to put a passphrase on there and you guys can do the same. But just note that you didn't put a passphrase on it. And if someone steals your laptop or your hard drive or something, then they can get into your system using your key or your servers using your key. Now, another issue with the passphrase that I forgot to mention is if you do put a passphrase on there, each time you log into your server, it's gonna ask you for that password to unlock the key and then authenticate with the server. So let's go down and press enter and it's gonna ask you again so you don't have to put one in, 
but then it'll generate a random key for you. And as you can see, by default, it uses RSA 3772. And you can actually up that if you want to by using another flag. Uh, but the default is pretty much good enough. And it uses SHA-256. So now that we have our keys generated, you'll see them right here. Uh, you'll see ID RSA and then ID underscore RSA dot public. So that's the public key right there. So that's why they call it a key pair. Now that we have our key pair created, the next thing you want to do is copy it up to your remote server. And what I'm talking about is the public key. And there's another utility that you can use. It's called SSH-copy-ID. And this will copy it up to your server. And this is the simplest way of doing it. Now you can move this key up another way or a manual way, but it's recommended to use the this utility because it uses SSH and it's encrypted as it's pushed up to the server. So let's type that in right fast. But what all we have to do is type SSH and then dash copy and then dash ID. And then let's type in our login name as well as the host name that we want to copy our key to. So that's 192.168.10.146. And press enter. And it will ask you for your password. And this is the password to the actual server. So if it's different from your local machine, please understand that it's different. So you're, you're actually SSHing into the other server. So let's press enter. And as you can see, it added that key to the server. And we can read the results, but it says, now try logging into the machine using SSH, Josh, and then the IP address. And check to make sure that only the keys you wanted were added. So that's one thing they recommend you do. Uh, Cause sometimes when you run this command, it'll copy every key that you have in your key store. And a lot of times you don't want that or want all those keys copied up there. You may just want one copied up there for that specific server. But you also want to make sure you can log in using the key anyway, which is what we're going to do now. So now all we have to do is type SSH and then the IP address to log into the server. And just so you guys know, the reason I'm not putting Josh there, because when you have the same user account, as the user account on the server like my user account on the server is josh and my user account on this local machine is josh as well you don't have to type in that name you can just type in the ip address and it'll automatically assume or know that you're using the same account name now if you need to log in as root then you want to type root in here so you, you see what i'm saying so let's type uh the rest of the ip address so 146 press enter boom as you see we logged in it didn't prompt us for a password or anything because our key is installed and just to show you something super cool you can actually look at your authorized keys on the server itself so if we type uh i'm gonna just run cat uh because i don't care if you guys see this key i'm gonna delete it but uh cat and then dot ssh and then what we want to look for is a file called authorized keys and if you look in there that'll show you the actual key that's the actual key and you can tell by the end of it it says josh at zorn uh 16 is the key that belongs to this system right here and it's installed on our server now the next thing you want to do is configure ssh because now that we have our key installed we don't need password authentication turned on anymore so you want to go into your ssh config sshd config file in order to turn off password authentication that way you don't have to worry about those pesky brute forcers out there pinging against your server because password authentication is turned off at the moment so let me clear right fast and i'm gonna bring up the actual file and as you can see i'm still ssh into the server but let's type sudo nano and then the file is under etc and then ssh and then under there is sshd underscore config and i need to do another video showing you guys how to modify ssh or the best settings you know for ssh in order to secure your server 
uh, but I'll show you guys that a little later. But basically, this is the configuration file. You know, here's some of the defaults. Like, if you want to change the port, the default port for your SSH server, you could change it. Because right now, the default is 22. That's why it's commented out, because there's no need to actually put a, have the port information turned on in the config. It automatically uses the default port for SSH, which is 22. This is only needed if you want to use a non-standard port. Now let's scroll down a little bit, but what we're looking for is the password authentication. And what we want to do is turn that off. And it's a little ways down, but if we go down a little further and there we go. And as you can see, password authentication by default is on, but the way you turn it off is you uncomment that line for a password authentication, and then go down to the end and let's type no because we want that turned off and let's go down and uh save this file boom and now we have to restart ssh the ssh server so let's type sudo system ctl and i might lose connection but oh well uh we're gonna restart the server regardless and then ssh and press enter boom and it restarted it you know it only took a couple seconds it just basically reloaded that config file now if we ex exit out of the server the way to actually test this is by running and i know the password to the root account so let's type that in i'm gonna up arrow and then what i'm gonna do is add the root account i want to try to log in as roots and let's press enter boom as you can see, permissions denied. So you need a public key in order to log into it. And when before I could use my password for the root account, you know, over SSH, but now it's configured to where I cannot use a password. I have to have a public key on this server. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully this walks you guys through how to set up your SSH keys on your remote server and turning off password authentication because it'll heavily secure your server but if you have any questions leave comments down in the comments below and of course keep it techie